thank you, Beck, and thank you to the Goji in um, group and family and network for having us from Nelson Mandela University here in what's a, a cold Kebeja, which is formerly known as Port Elizabeth. I'd like to take the liberty of presenting my colleague and dear friend, uh, Koshle Toblanche. Koshle, you want, want to say hi before we begin? I'll just wait for now. <laughs> 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 so um, like Beck said, it's being recorded and then um, we'll have opportunities for questions in the chat as we go along. Um, I'd also like to introduce two of the staff members of the student advocacy group that we have here at Nelson Mandela, which is called the Open Education Influences or OEs, OEI small letter S, um, Hannah and Lindsay are here and you'll get to meet Hannah and Lindsay in just a few short minutes. And with that said, let me share my screen and we can begin. If someone can just give me a verbal indication that they can see my screen, it would be very appreciated. Yes, yes we, we can. can. Thank you. So, like I said, my name is Gino Franzman, and this is the GoGN uh, webinar session, 18th of August, 2022. The title of our session is Open Empowerment and Evaluation. So, professional development, content curation, and then quality, and you'll see the matters is in small letters, and that's because we don't want to infringe upon other people's research outputs. Your presenters today, um, I, I'm hoping that I'm not going to get these um, notifications about uh, the waiting room, um, which kind of go across my screen here. And um, your presenters today are myself, Gina Frontman, and I'm from the Open Education Influences. And then Koshla Tablanche, who's from Learning Experience Design and Innovation. And we both housed in the LT CoLab here at Nelson Mandela University. So the Open Education Influences, or OEs, and you can say that out loud so that we don't have the OEIS, which is, yeah, not what we call. Um, so OES are ambassadors for open who increase the awareness of OER, open educational resources, and open education practices. We facilitate the adoption, creation, and licensing of OER, but really open content. Open Ed influences energetically in advocate for the use of open textbooks across purpose, faculties, and schools. We'll speak about that and our 2022 Open Textbooks Fellowship as I go along. So what's the background and connection to Goji in? Well, I have a very personal one here and that's a picture from I think 2015, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And this was in Banff in Canada and um, our fearless leader uh, in the middle there, I don't, I'm not sure if you can see where my cursor is, but that's Prof um, Fred Mulder, an RIP Prof Fred Mulder, who led us fearlessly into an international network of PhD researchers engaging in open research. Um, on the far left of the screen is Dr. Robert Farrow, and Dr. Robert Farrow is one of the program managers of GoGN and was also my mentor. And while I was doing my PhD, still incomplete, let me, let me just be honest. Um, he actually told me that what I was doing was more about advocacy than research. And against my stubborn nature, it took a while for me to actually embrace the advocacy part because I was struggling so much with the research. What it did mean was then going from the PhD and leaving that to the side, it meant that I could focus on advocacy, which turned into the Open Education Influences Initiative here at Mandela Uni, and then became the empowerment online free open course called Becoming an Open Education Influencer or shortened to BOE. What did we do? Uh, well, what do we do? It's about awareness raising, speak about that. It's about empowerment. It's a lot of mentoring. It's because we want professional development of our student cohorts. Student voice is such an integral part of what we do here. Um, it gave us access to networks, which was also access to travel and amazing opportunities. We've been all across the world and thank you Goji in for being so generous with that. Um, Open Education for a Better World. I'm now the Africa Hub Coordinator, and we go to Slovenia in September to present some of this work with other um, 
content authors from across the world. It meant that we could start the Open Education Influences Project here at Nelson Mandela with a good firm footing after being empowered in the domain and with a community of practices to rely on, to lean on, to also collaborate with. In 2022, it means that we have an open textbook fellowship here at Nelson Mandela University. And Hannah and Lindsay are actually busy working on an updated 2022 version of the student textbook experience survey, where we look at student voice and their experiences of dealing with, managing with traditional textbooks. So, I spoke about a lot of things that we're doing now, and you can see that the plans for 2021 and 2022 are really, and there's a long list of things that we've been doing and that we are still about to do. What's important for this year, I think, is that the Roots to Open webinar series is, is coming up, and I'm going to be reaching out to some of the people in this room to collaborate with us, um, to engage with our staff, with our students, and people who are going to be joining in that series of webinars, which looks at the practicalities of opening up um, as practitioners, as educators, and as students. So the Open Education Influences Project, uh, well, the aim is really to empower others to activate personal, community professional development goals and it's all related to the sustainable development goals and how by doing something about achieving it open education influence says don't just say they do and the bowie course the becoming an open education influencer course is really that vehicle the course has six modules it's open it's Ubuntu, which is a philosophy of sharing, an African philosophy of sharing, and it ties in beautifully with the aims and intentions of open. Third module is advocacy, because we need to get this message across to other people. And how do we do that? By facilitating either online or face-to-face. -face. Well, mask to mask is what we call it at Mandela Union now. The other module is influencing, and you see the G has been shifted there by some feat of formatting. Thank you. Uh, to the system for doing that for us. Um, and influencing means that there are different locus of locations of power really. And students sometimes need to be able to speak upwards to lecturers and tell them, hey, like, have you seen this thing called open education resources? Don't you think that this is a wonderful opportunity for innovating the provision of teaching and learning materials perhaps? And of course, the sustainable development goals. Why? Because we live in a bigger world and because of technology, we don't just engage in our own private spaces any longer. So the Bowie course is on the engage.mandala.ac.za learning management system, which in our case here at Mandala Uni is Moodle. Um, the engage system, however, means that it is publicly accessible. So instead of having to be a registered user at the university and everything is then hidden behind a paywall or an access wall, the engage and um, courses that are placed on there are available to anyone. You can go there, you can click on the open education um, tag or, or option there. And once there, you'll see a list of courses. You are able to self enroll and thank you to Andrew Thiel for designing this um, few slides for me yesterday, which helps you to actually activate uh, and enroll yourself. Um, the enrollment key is there and it's Bowie 2022 for you to self enroll and access the course. Good luck. Um, each module is six hours long. It's no playing uh, around. Um, it's fully assessed. And at the end of it, uh, you will leave there able to advocate for change in education using open education resources, but really um, to share the amazing opportunities that open presents. download onto your cell phone, you are able to work offline. So you can do your coursework offline, you can take the assessments and when you reconnect, it will update the system and your progress will be automatically recorded. So once again, thank you to Andrew Thua from Alex D for the work to make this real. So every time like someone's in the waiting room and then what it does is it opens up that screen thing on top. So the teams of open education influences since 2018, we've been a, um, a real reality, 
really. And you'll see 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. And this leads me to the team in 2022. And both Hannah and Lindsay are here. Hannah is an aspirant music therapist. Lindsay is a master's student in the law faculty. I'm going to hand over to them briefly so that they can just say something about the professional development that we've put into the actual presentation title. Lindsay, over to you. Hi, everyone. I uh, trust you can see and hear me. Um, as Gino said, my name is Lindsay. I'm a master's in law student here at NMU. And yeah, being part of the, the open education uh, team at Mandela Uni really has been such an eye-opening experience for me. Um, the first thing that we did as OEs was complete the Bowie course. And prior to completing Bowie, the, the word influencer uh, brought with it some negative connotations, you know, relating to the so-called social media influencer who's promoting this unobtainable lifestyle. Um, but after doing Bowie, now when I think of an influencer, I understand it to be someone who energetically advocates for a worthy cause, which in our case is making quality education more accessible. So Bowie really is such a helpful platform on which to base your advocacy approach as an informed and inclusive OE. I've also come to learn just how much planning, organization, and thought goes into the creation of, an, of a textbook or educational resource. And as OEs, we've been assisting uh, Nikki Ann Rapin with the creation of her open textbook titled Open Education in the Performing Arts. So we've been helping to find, organize, and tailor open resources to our purposes. And I've seen just how important it is to create something that applies to the South African context, as many OERs that are available come from a Westernized perspective. Um, and lastly, we're also in the process of preparing a presentation for students at our university in order to raise awareness about the resources that are out there and freely available to them. And although it might take me out of my comfort zone, I'm really excited to share with them about open and hope that it makes them optimistic about the opportunities that open education presents. Uh, Hannah, over to you. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, my name is Hannah Blanche, and I am a third year Bachelor of Music student at Nelson Mandela University and aspiring to become a music therapist. I am passionate about learning and sharing the knowledge and skills which I acquire with others in ways that they can understand and relate to. And Open is giving me a platform to do this. My role as an Open Education Influencer, OE, uh, is to advocate for open as well as assist our authors in the creation of open textbooks. Being a part of this team gives me the opportunity to improve my research and writing skills um, and being able to curate open resources that I as a student would benefit from using. My hope is to see open resources used more extensively in the arts and to grow a culture where creatives are developing open resources. I believe that music is about expressing yourself creatively and sharing that beauty with others. And what better way to do that than share our knowledge and skills on open platforms. I am grateful for the experience and skills that I've gained being an OE uh, and being a student, this has exposed me to the working world as well as um, pushes me to um, work on my time management. Um, completing the Becoming an Open Education Influences course, BOE, uh, has enlightened me to the possibilities within open and has given me a basis of understanding about how to move forward curating licensing and advocating for open resources i have also been made aware of the importance of education and the role that open plays in it through assisting nikki ann rapin in her open education and the performing arts textbook i have grown in my research and how to extract relevant information as well as being exposed to the processes of video, um, producing video content. Uh, yes, I've also um, been given the opportunity to further my knowledge in my field, the arts, um, and working hands-on with the content has, um, is equipping me for potential um, 
future positions and um, as an educator um, or facilitator and researcher. And I'm currently working on developing the 2022 student textbook experience survey. Um, this research instrument has broadened my knowledge and skills in this area. And I'm looking forward to the new opportunities and challenges that this project will bring. Back to you, Gina. Thank you, Hannah, and thank you, Lindsay. And as we, as we listen to, to um, what the current cohort of open education influencers uh, sort of share about what they've been exposed to in terms of professional development and the opportunities to, to curate, but also to create, I'd like to just sort of wrap up what students have said across the five years of our existence now. And they say that their contributions have been largely, and this is a summary, as makers, right is about brainstorming it's about sourcing open content it's the practical research and you know like we're making young academics here but we're turning them into working professionals and they've been engaging in peer-to-peer -peer research um, conducting surveys they've also been helping to develop a structure for the course and for modules and this has now translated into them being able to do the same in the open textbook fellowship project Hannah and Lindsay have had to um, go on a boot camp in terms of script writing. And what's nice is that the previous cohorts of OE's created OER uh, in terms of guides for filming, for script writing, for the production of these wonderful and illustrative videos that, that really do speak to people visually through the power of media. And then, I mean, look where we all are now, like without open, without the open education influences, people here in this team are collaborating both locally and internationally. So what have students said about OER while doing the Bowie course? And this is just about open education resources, okay? I had no idea what this meant. And after watching the videos and reading the notes, I know what it is. I'm surprised the education system in South Africa is not exploiting this cost-effective and efficient way of delivering high quality education. There are intellectual property issues, yes, but I believe the ideal of Ubuntu can possibly solve the issue. I've done two modules so far and I'm enjoying the process. So Hannah and Lindsay spoke about going out there and doing research about student voices and textbook experiences. So we asked them about traditional textbooks before we asked them about open textbooks, right? So this is just gonna go very quickly because you will have access to all of these resources, these resources at the end, and you can do some personal interrogation of, of all of this content. So this is some of what some students have said, and there's a lot, right? There's very fine print there as well, but I'm gonna go here to the bottom middle where someone says that the cost of textbooks has been a major challenge while attending university. It made university less enjoyable due to the poor grades when I can't afford a textbook. We're looking at social justice, I mean, access to information and good quality academic teaching and learning information should be available to everyone free of charge. Charge them for the accreditation, charge them for the stamp from the university once they've been assessed, but the knowledge should be free. So we are students, Rob's here, I'm letting him in, sorry. We are students, how many textbooks do you purchase in a semester? Like really concerning is the fact, if you look at this gold bar here, that students are saying, I don't purchase textbooks at all. We asked them, has the cost of required textbooks ever caused you to do any of the following? And we go to that gold block again, right? And it says that it, they've earned a poor grade because they couldn't afford to buy the textbook. If you look at this blue, that's even more concerning because students are saying that they don't purchase that textbook at all. So what do you do to reduce textbook costs, we asked, and we said, select all that that apply. If we go from this purple here in the middle, I don't think that's purple on everyone's screen, but you can see where my cursor is. So we're borrowing books from a short loan program, and you know that that's a dodgy situation because it has to go back. You don't have control over access because of time constraints. You go further on, scan selected text, share PDFs, borrow books from the, the short load, take photos of selected text materials, download illegally online, print materials and disregard copyright. These are all illegal um, behaviors or unethical behaviors at, at minimum. 
so we said we asked people about like just open textbooks and we said like open textbooks are free to read online they're free to download cheaper to print and easy to share how familiar are you with this so you can see there that 77 percent of them said never heard of it um that 14 percent who said i've heard of it but never looked for any well that skews that is the research to be honest because most of them had been in a workshop with either myself or my team of always before that then we asked them would you use an open textbook if it was free yes it was shareable without restrictive copyright yes it could be printed, yes. If it was created for your course, yes. And if it was from another institution, still yes. Should the university be using open textbooks? A large resounding yes from the students. And so we started the Open Textbook Fellowship in 2021. It was a pilot in 2022. We've taken great strides forward. It's not just about getting people into a project, however. It's about capacity building. And this is a screenshot um, taken on the day I got to France in um, for OE Global this year. And just 30 minutes after getting into the hotel, we had a support workshop for our current cohort of authors um, conducted by the UCT dot for d team. Lots of us know that uh, Dr. Glenda Cox is one of our Goji in alumni, and we're super grateful for, for their inputs, and they'll be joining us again. Media content, you are free to click on this link once you've got this, um, this resource and see Open and the Arts by Ms. Nikki Ann Raypen. Of course, we can't speak about open textbooks without speaking about the library. So in 2022, we've made a formal collaboration with the Mandela Uni Library. They're helping us with curation support for identifying resource scarce or high risk modules. And I think that that's a major, major stride in terms of engaging with areas of challenge in the student experience. They're also helping us to establish an open content repository of Mandela Uni learning and teaching resources. Of course, we've had several advocacy in, uh, interventions or events online. Uh, during COVID, we had two colloquia and last year's one was under the hashtags of disrupt, decolonize, but also develop. It was hosted by the amazingly talented ventriloquist and comedian and social anthropologist, Masters, uh, Conrad Koch and his satirical puppet, Chester Missing. Click on that link and have a look at another way for us to start engaging with the potential of open education in our spaces. Now I'd like to ask one of the Mandela Uni developers about their experience and for some tips that you can use as you make your own online. And also we, we're taking this to open education for a better world in Slovenia in September course. So over to you, Kosla. Okay, thank you, Gino. Um, next slide, please. So Gino, uh, briefly introduce me. I am Kosla de Blanche, all the way from the windy city of Port Elizabeth. I am currently employed at the Nelson Mandela University uh, as a learning experience designer. My background, however, is in information technology, and I have probably about 24 years experience in higher education, supporting the higher education environment. Uh, my current focus uh, is on uh, learning analytics, uh, process design, technology implementation, uh, implementation to support administrative teacher and learner needs. And then the one thing I keep asking myself is why do I do what I do? Um, this is one of the questions Gino asked me right in the beginning when I got involved. And I say, and I replied to him that I feel passionate about what I do because uh, for me, it awards, affords me the opportunity to, to actually change the world by being part of a team that can design uh, great learning experiences for our students. And then also uh, as a, a indirect goal is I can contribute directly to the SDG number four, which says ensure inclusive and equitable quality education to promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Next slide, please. Um, so this is um, my team and I, uh, and like the saying goes, it, it takes a village to, to raise a child. It also takes a a big team, a multidisciplinary team to create great online courses. Uh, our 
Gina, you, 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 you going. Our team um, uh, consists of graphic designers, learning experience designers, some IT, ICT experience, training, e-technologists, script light writers, editors, and content experts. So I just want to um, acknowledge the rest of my team and uh, remind everybody that the, the, the path to creating great content is not a, a lone path. Um, I got, like I said, I got involved in OE during lockdown when the entire world was in disarray. And, and I think for me personally, um, the, the project uh, was a good coping mechanism for me to, to, to make, to actually keep me focused on what I was doing and not to get too concerned about what was happening around me. So I, I used the time to broaden my scope and to enhance my skills. And I learned many new things. Uh, the thing I think uh, that I gained the most confidence in is presenting, because presenting has always been a huge hurdle for me. Next slide, please. So I'm going to share with you my personal experiences as a student, as a teacher, as a facilitator, as a system engineer, and a course creator. Lesson, I think, number one, uh, it does take effort to get things set up for the first time. And yes, it is a daunting task. Uh, but three short points I would say is start small, uh, try to build feedback into your course and um, use it to use the feedback to improve each iteration of your course. Uh, one of the brilliant things about online education or um, online resources is that you can easily and quickly make improvements on, for, on it. Then the other thing from our perspective that we discovered was we needed to, we needed to be consistent for our students or our participants. So uh, we um, worked on a standard way of presenting things so that it takes the guesswork out of um, out of the learning. The student knows exactly where to go, where everything will be, and how how to get going. Next slide, please. Do you know you're there? Yes. Oh. I've gone to the next one. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, and so the, the, often I think, okay, well, I, I certainly had that perception is that um, open education resources are inferior because they are free. And that's why at our university, we placed emphasis on uh, making sure that the quality of our courses does matter and that they should meet instructional design and accessibility standards. Um, and also to ensure that you, you review your courses regularly to make sure everything works, uh, it's fresh and refreshed all the time. Next slide, please. So at, at Mandela Uni, uh, we needed some way of evaluating our content and we searched and we found an open educational resource for evaluating courses and decided uh, we needed to recreate it in accordance with the five R's. Uh, we found this resource from the State University of New York. Uh, they developed a, an online course rubric and processes that addresses the instructional design and accessibility of online courses. Um, a little bit about the rubric, the rubric is openly licensed for anyone to use and adapt. The aim of the rubric is to, uh, uh, and process is to support continuous improvements to the quality and accessibility of online courses. The rubric consists of uh, 50 different standards categorized into six different sections. At Mandela Uni, we adapted this rubric uh, for self-evaluation of courses. Uh, Gino and I will be, be presenting uh, the resource to the authors are in the UNESCO Open Education for a Better World program in Slovenia in September this year. The next few slides are just images of the resource. Um, I must add a disclaimer that the, uh, this is the first draft of the resource and we are busy developing it and getting feedback as we speak. Next slide, please. Because this was a self-evaluation tool, we made sure to build in clear instructions into the resource. Next slide, please. And of course, give credit where credit is due. Next slide, please. Um, 
the, the clear, it, it's self-explanatory. It tells you what to do, how to do it, where to get the results. Next slide, please. And then this particular slide, we actually just built in so that if you come back five months down the line, you know when last you checked your course, uh, who it was checked by, and you, you have a record of, of the information. Next slide, please. Uh, this is an example of one of the categories with clear instructions on what to do. Each of the items, for example, a uh, course includes welcome and getting started content, a hyperlink to a web page. Uh, this web page then reviews the explanations, gives examples, suggestions, ideas on how to refresh your course. Next slide, please. That's, our, that's the last screen in our evaluation tool. Uh, this particular evaluation is what I started when I was doing the Bowie course. Uh, it gives one uh, overview of where you need to work on your course. Uh, it's a dashboard in a way to quickly uh, say, hey, I need to make improvements here or hey, I'm doing this well. Um, our next step is to license the tool as an OER and to make it available on our university website. And then I made a, a, a mental note that uh, this is my last point. My um, Gino mentioned earlier that uh, we have students that have become advocates and OEs. And I just like to emphasize that uh, although the project is open education, uh, there's a very important indirect goal of this project in that our OEs are creating student generated content. Thank you, Gino. Over to you. Thank you, Kostler, and, and really well said. I really like that last point that you made in terms of the student generation of content, because that's literally what we're trying to empower people with here. Uh, very often the route to teaching and learning or learning and teaching, like we uh, phrase it here at Mandela Uni, is through the educators themselves. But I think that there's also a sort of transfer of competencies of experience that speaks directly to the ability to enter the professional world, the world of work, which is really what we're trying to empower our students into. So to wrap it all up, this is the Goji in sort of influence on what we've been doing. We are funded by the Siapumalela um, project here in South Africa, which is funded by the Kresge Foundation in the US. And we are so grateful for all of their help because it's really, profiled us and, and, and really like pushed us out into the real world and being able to do real things. And then of course, Open Education for a Better World, which is another UNESCO initiative that looks at international mentoring. And like I said, I'm the Africa Hub coordinator for this year. And there's several projects across this continent that look at specific SDGs and how we can help to realize that. So several of us are going to Slovenia in September and we're so excited to do this because we've got lots to share. Pashna did say this, that it takes a village and the open education influences is definitely a village. If you just go through this list, you'll see there's several names that you know, including Dr. Robert Farrell and, and Rob, I really want to say thank you for, for your mentorship, for you being like such an influence on, on my professional development as well. Uh, we had a hub coordination from Igor Lesko from Open Education Global, which has been really, really invaluable. And then so many people have been sort of contributors to what we do. And it's an amazing, amazing opportunity just to acknowledge everyone here. I do want to say thank you to Mr. Dave Jenkins, Dr. Nolatanda Tony, Dr. Charles Shepard, and of course our DVC Learning and Teaching Professor Cheryl Foxcroft. Before we go, um, yeah, sometimes you get recognized for the work that you do and the work that we've done in open has been internationally recognized in quite a few spaces now and the work from Goji in the fellowship that was granted to Dr. Chrissy Naranzi, who is also one of the Goji in alumni, um, allowed us to make the picture storybook called together. We've been able to translate the picture storybook into so many different languages, international languages. I think that we've got um, seven languages across the African continent. Some of the OEs facilitated these translations of a, a storybook which really shares the values of open and of collaboration with young people all around the world. And it, it's been such a rewarding experience. 
We won a 2021 UNESCO OER Implementation Award for Excellence and Community and Open Education. So that was amazing. And then finally, because of being able to work in this space, I was granted or I, I was awarded um, the 2021 Open Education Global Emerging Leader Award. And I'd like to say thank you for the acknowledgement and the recognition. But again, to stress that this has been because of a team of people and the team at University of Massachusetts Amherst with another GoGN member, Sarah Hutton. I cannot say thank you enough for all that you've done for all of us and to make Bowie real. You can visit our website on HTTPS please, openedinfluences.mandala.ac.za. You'll find us under the Open Ed Influences hashtag on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We are quite prolific online. Um, and you can look at our series of videos that we've created um, that we spoke about content creation and video production. It's called the May During Lockdown series of videos. We, we look at the teams. We look at what open education is. We look at the routes to enter and open up in your spaces. But we also have a video there I'm looking at traditional and open textbooks and what that means, along with a host of resources that you can access and find out more. If you want to access the Bowie course, use our enrollment guide in this document to access or share the course. And this is for yourself or for others. Push it out there. We don't mind. If you want to make a version of Bowie for yourself, please contact me. From us at Mandela University, we say change the world. And from me, thank you. Back to you, Beck. <laughs>